Fort Myers, Florida. All right, guys, so we just got off the highway here in North Fort Myers, and I can already smell that repugnant smell that is always associated with homelessness. So we're going to come in here and try to explore uh, these homeless camps. I am wearing uh, a pretty heavy-duty outfit today, even though it's hot here in Florida, because um, if somebody were to try to stab me or something, I want to have a few extra layers of protection. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Just really geared up, uh, heavy duty pants, boots, everything. Um, as you guys know, going into these homeless camps is super dangerous. So we want to make sure that we're as protected as possible. I also got the GoPro on me uh, in case uh, any type of uh, situation were to unfold. Um, so one of the telltale signs that people are back here is that you can see that the palm fronds are kind of beat up and cut down. These are coffee beans, like real actual coffee beans right here. So a lot of people tell me this is just roadside garbage and no, it's not. There seems to be a real consistency here on the types of things that are here, which means that somebody who's been periodically coming through here. I can tell you there's definitely an active camp somewhere around here. Illegal dumping is definitely a thing here. You can see people have been dumping dump truck tires. The county of Florida has had a lot of growth. There's a lot of dump trucks working in the area. So this is a mattress. Looks like they tried to take the cover off it, either use it for something else or to get the scrap metal out. But when they saw that it was a foam mattress, they backed off from it. A lot of people are saying, well, Fort Myers just had a hurricane. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't excuse illegal dumping. You can see here that somebody had started a small fire. It's actually a mattress here. And looks like they're using the mattress almost as a roof. You can see there's some articles of female clothing here. You can see there's female clothing, there's towels. So all this would be consistent with somebody living here. And lakes are gonna be a staple of most homeless camps in Florida. And guys, we didn't have to look too far to find this area. This is the first exit off of North Fort Myers. You can see here how people have been dumping uh, garbage and dump truck tires. This is an extremely horrendous thing for the environment. So this is what you end up with here in Lee County. How, do, how does somebody end up on the streets, man? Well, I ended up here because I didn't have a great beginning. I uh, didn't really make it through school. I was kicked out. It's not like I dropped out, I got kicked out. I really didn't want education. And as is usual for these homeless camps, you're gonna end up with beautiful lakeside properties, which the working class can't afford, but the homeless very well can. You can see that they have positioned uh, these tires here to overlook this lake. Perhaps they were using the tires um, as some type of place to sit down or whatever, but you can see clearly here how um, they have used the tires. So one of the main reasons that these homeless camps are near lakes is so that people can bathe. You can see there's an alligator right there. Nonetheless, the reason that the homeless camps are usually near lakes is so they can have access to water to bathe. Now, I want you guys to understand that people that live in these homeless camps will eat alligators, will eat turtles, will eat snakes. And while the alligator may have plans to eat the people, the people can most certainly eat the alligators. So despite the fact there's definitely gonna be alligators inside of this lake, the reason people are setting up camp in this area is so that they can have access to this lake. You can see that maybe the goal was to dump the tires into the, the lake. What, 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 uh, what school district was that? Um, that was Lee County. Lee County? Do you feel like they forced you to leave or did you actually earn it? Um, I guess I actually earned it. I mean, I was kind of bullied into where I was. Uh, they put me in ALC, which is Alternative Learning Center. I was one of the first white people to ever go there. Yeah. So um, my first day there, I was gonna get jumped. And uh, I went to the teacher and told the teacher and she told me to go sit back down. So I left the classroom and then went to the principal and asked the principal, or, and the principal just told me to go back to class. So I went back to class 
when class was through, they all surrounded me to jump me. And uh, my first instinct is uh, was to stab a kid in the neck. So I you had it, you had it on you in school. I, I had a pencil that I sharpened yeah. during class. I kept sharpening it, and the first one to come in, I stabbed him in the neck. And believe it or not, Mr. DeSaggio was the principal. He's the one that tackled me. Um, so he was watching it all go down as it happened, and he knew it was going to happen. All right, guys. So now we are approaching. Uh, what's clearly homeless camps back in this little area of the woods. Um, this is super dangerous. That's why I'm wearing a complete outfit of sweaters and sweatpants, even though it's hot in Florida today, to ensure that if somebody were trying to stab me, let's say that I have a few extra layers of protection. Again, more dump truck tires. I guess somebody was gonna make a bonfire right here. So this is what remains of an older camp. I guess it's just been torn down for a while. But you can see they had tarps and they were using uh, the type of plumbing supplies that the county uses to build stuff kind of as a framework for this camp, which is no longer here. Here's an old mattress foam. You can see that there's so much crime at this particular gas station that the sheriff office has had to put up a trailer that has approximately five cameras looking in all directions, possibly for vagrants, homeless people setting up fires, possibly women of the night or women of the trucks, and of course the good old stolen truck. All that for a dang gas station. So I want to show you guys something. You see all these beautiful new homes here in North Fort Myers? New construction. Hello? This is a homeless camp. It's very well hidden. They're trying to stay. Hello? I'm just doing my job, man. Don't worry. Somebody's living here. I'm just doing my job, man. Don't worry about me. But what's crazy is literally he has a crowbar here for protection. So like I said, it's just super dangerous. Um, this is how people have to live when they don't have a place to live. Um, but we're gonna move along. We don't wanna invade uh, what little privacy they have, but you can see they're doing a good job of hiding it at least. Um, there's definitely somebody living here for sure. So we don't wanna be too pushy, but you can see that there's literally a Publix right there new home construction right there and this person's doing the best they can to hide their homeless camps now this is the case all through southwest florida not just north fort myers you're gonna find this in bradenton sarasota north fort myers this is a thing in southwest florida the reason this person's here is because they have access to a lake where they can bathe also look at how clear the water is somewhat and it's shallow so they can see if an alligator's underneath it Obviously, they're even able to take a shower and wash their clothes here in some type of way. But as you're driving down the main street, you're seeing new houses and a Publix. But right behind all that are homeless camps. And this isn't the only one here at the site. This is just one of many. And you wonder if the people that are buying these new houses are aware that within just a few hundred feet of their brand new Florida dream home are people living in the woods quite the quite the situation here now you really have to know what you're looking for because this homeless camp is quite literally very well hidden all right guys we got some more illegal dumping and i know a lot of you guys said in the last video but they had a hurricane but there's no excuse to litter you idiot and by the way for those of you that don't know florida law Dumping over 500 pounds 
is a felony in the state of Florida. A felony. California knows how to party in the city of Norfolk Myers. People come here from other countries and in a few years they set up businesses and own houses. Yet the people that are from the United States just can't get over their addiction. All right guys, this used to be a homeless camp, but now they're putting in new luxury apartments. But let's see if the homeless people that were here just moved a little further back. More tires. And again, the fact that we just had a hurricane is no excuse for felony dumping. A lot of people on my other videos were saying stuff like, well, well, we just had a hurricane. No, that doesn't excuse felony dumping. They can afford to pay their workers good, but they just don't want to. This is where it all ends up when you don't pay people enough to dump it. The homeless camps were actually just right here on this roundabout around it but because of the new construction they had to move further back and once again more dump truck tires unbelievable all right guys so we're gonna go into another homeless camp again this is absolutely dangerous many times these places are protected by the people that live here so we have to be extraordinarily careful in entering these spots right off the bat there are dump truck tires everywhere. I bet you could fill up a whole football field of nothing but dump truck tires out of Lee County. Okay guys, we're coming through. This is extraordinarily dangerous. We suspect there's gonna be homeless people here. There's two bicycle wheels on the trail. That is street terminology for do not enter. But of course, we're not gonna abide by that. But uh, the fact that those bicycle tires are there is as if somebody were claiming this and saying, do not enter. Um, it's a street code type of thing. If you leave something that is related to motion, like a pair of shoes or tires on the trail, it indicates do not enter. It's somebody claiming that they own this, but obviously nobody owns it. It's actually being staked out right here. Now, here's another shoe right here on the trail. Like I said, anything that's feet or travel related blocking the trail kind of indicates do not enter. So if you're out around the trail and you see shoes or bicycle tires, anything that's motion related is usually going to indicate that you are, uh, it's like a stay out. This camp here looks very primitive, um, but it's definitely active because it looks very fresh. You can see that this area is being staked out for a new construction. So chances are those new apartments that they're building there. We're going to keep moving into this direction. This is a primitive campsite, but you can tell by the weathering on the clothing items that this is definitely a fresh site. And by the fact we have uh, warnings over there with the shoes and all that. But you can see they have a place to sit down and create a few blankets to sleep on. A few palm fronds that they've cut down, which would indicate that the person that's staying here has a machete on them. The fact that they've cut these palm branches to arrange their bed means that they are indicating that there's a knife here somewhere. Uh, but you can see it's just basic, uh, not a lot of garbage. This is a very clean new camp. A piece of mirror, uh, some type of piece of tenting. So definitely this is a site that somebody... Others. Hey, pasa, amigo. No hay amenaza. Solo estoy trabajando. Se puede pasar más adelante. Okay. Oh, está pescando. Okay, completo. No hay problema. No hay amenaza. Solo estoy trabajando. Okay. No es que hay gente que vive acá y problema. Solo pesca. No, no, tranquilo. You good, bro. So we got somebody fishing here. We're just doing, having a good time fishing. But, um, 
Okay, so there's a little creek here, and again, water is always an element in these camps. You have to have water. If you don't have water, you can't have a homeless camp in Florida. You have to be able to bathe. You got to be able to fish. Um, but this is definitely the neatest camp I've seen so far. We're actually going to retract and get back up out of here quickly because, you know. You know, I find it interesting how many pharmaceutical bottles I find in the woods here in Florida. Found another camp here. Now, I walked right past this, but I didn't notice it when I came in. Um, but you can see here, that there's a barbecue grill. And if we think about it, how dangerous of a site this is to start up a barbecue grill. I mean, literally, right behind the grill, you have a sable palm tree. These palm trees will light a blaze in seconds. And it's a quick, fast, powerful fire. You also have branches on top from hurricane damage. So this grill right here has the potential to start an absolutely horrendous fire within close proximity you can hear the construction workers building those new apartments so this is uh i mean it's just littered with dead branches from the hurricane this barbecue here this is a danger to this community what i've noticed so far in these camps here in north fort myers is that they're a lot cleaner than the camps you're going to find in other parts of florida it seems like there's a little bit more hygiene here, a little bit more cleanliness, a little bit less litter. Now, I want to show you guys, I am just walking around. The humidity and the heat right now is unbearable. You see those men up there on that roof? Look at that, guys. Look at those guys over there. That right there, those are the types of people you want in your country. Look at that, one, two, three, four stories up in the heat of the day with a nail gun. They've been up there all day, ta, 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 building homes for the people in America who need them. These are, are, are that right there, those men, they're building these buildings. Those people right there deserve our respect. People talk about what's wrong with America. On all my homeless video, the conversation's always, what's wrong with America? Well, here's one clue. You're getting rid of the hardworking people that are building this country. So the only person that I saw back there was one dude who was fishing. I don't think he was living there. I think he was just fishing. He had um, just, you know, fishing pole and stuff, but uh, his hygiene looked too good to be homeless. He was just fishing. But uh, yeah, it's crazy how, you know, behind all these new communities are homeless camps and I don't think the people that are moving into these communities are aware that their neighbors are homeless camps. your problem i didn't talk to you i don't want to talk to you i don't have to tell you anything who are you your mother i didn't talk to you leave me the hell alone unbelievable dude these people are just getting all they're trying to fight with you and you're just doing your job i didn't talk to her i didn't say nothing when i walked by who are you who are you i didn't talk to you none of your business keep it moving bro I don't like being rude to people, but there's times where you gotta just know that you gotta be a little bit more firm with people. All right, guys, so we're on the intersection of US 41 and Pine Island Road. You, you, if it were up to you, would you have stayed in school? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. I wish I had my education. I never thought that like I would uh, not be able to spell or do math and stuff like that. At what point did they uh, take, what grade was that? That was sixth grade. Sixth grade? So everybody that lives in Cape Coral, Florida, 
has to traverse through North Fort Myers because there's no interstates, there's no highways. There's really nothing that gets you from Cape Coral to where you work in Fort Myers or Naples. So all these people every single day have to line up for hours on uh, Bay Shore to enter Cape Coral from wherever they live. And it is definitely a very uh, stressful commute. Uh, people get angry, they road rage each other. The stuff that you see out here is just crazy. Um, you know, they say Cape Coral is one of the safest cities with the lowest crime and all that. But they forget to tell you that right next to Cape Coral is North Fort Myers. So in the sixth grade, they kind of messed up your schooling for you. They didn't... They, uh, they were also, they also told my mother that they were going to give me a computer and a home tutor, and I never got one after right. that. Um, I was kicked out of all school, like, public schools, so um, I was no longer allowed back in Lee County education. Lee County so. schools. Okay. So, right now in Lee County, I think a new apartment around here is like 1600 uh, Somewhere around Where... Are you gonna find a job? Even if you had skills in an education, right? Yeah. Where um, you can. I, I mean, I could, I can find a job. Yeah. You could. Um, yeah. Is it gonna be enough to pay for housing? Uh, I am not. I'm not sure, man. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like you getting into trouble in school was your fault individually as a person, or do you think the adults that were around you? or other people around you could have been a contributing factor like how much of you because that's sixth grade you're, you're a child right yeah it's not up to you at that point 100 percent, right i mean no sixth grade's kind of uh, i i uh while i was young i really thought bad was cool you know yeah of course um so. i think that's normal for a lot of kids uh, that had a lot to do with it. Um, I didn't have the best background. Background. Do you think that played into you not having control? That definitely... Uh, like, let's say if your dad was a cop, right? And when the police officers came up to arrest you or whatever, or to kick you out of school, if your parents were police officers, even if you were engaged in the same exact behavior, do you think it would have had a different outcome? Um, yeah, you def definitely had a different outcome. So they claim that Cape Coral is the safest city in the country. Well, they forget to tell you that all of the bad neighborhoods in Cape Coral are just within North Fort Myers boundaries. And if you live in Cape Coral, you commute, you just about are forced to drive through North Fort Myers on a daily basis. While I was young, I really thought bad was cool, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, so. I think that's normal for a lot of kids. You kill my man. You kill my man. Class of one on my mano. Just in this parking lot here, there's a homeless person over here. Another one over there. You can see, um, I'm not going to point the camera in that direction. But you can hear there's people to the left of me. They're screaming at each other inside the car. So it seems like they're having some type of altercation inside the car. So you can see that violence is just prevalent here. There's somebody else homeless over here. So we can see that this entire area is just a lot of homelessness here. And... Um, as you saw the person that was involved in the car accident try to get into an altercation with me and there's somebody in a car behind us now having some type of altercation um you know addiction isn't just the people that are homeless it's also the people that aren't homeless yet and you can tell by the amount of violence that there is in this area how angry people are um how upset humanity is that humanity is kind of an indication of how miserable this place is right now I did a video showing the streets of Fort Myers and um, 
about a week ago got 80,000 views in like two days. And a lot of people were saying that was the worst part of Fort Myers. I'm like, no, it's not. Who told you that that was the worst part of Fort Myers? North Fort Myers is the worst part of Fort Myers. You know, but people are, are kind of in denial about the condition that Fort Myers is in right now. Do you feel like the people here in North Fort Myers are good and helpful a lot of times or no? Uh, yeah, some of them are, some of them are. Okay. Um, in what ways have people been, like, has anybody done something for you while you've been out here that you've appreciated a lot, that you just remember, like, man, that was really, like, really awesome? Uh, yeah, I've, I've had this lady, I, I don't, I still don't know her name. She's never given me her name. Okay. She's definitely a, a, a really, really, really generous, nice lady. She's popped up on me. I was in uh, Fort Myers over by the Publix, um, and this lady pulled up in a minivan, and uh, she, she told me that God led her to me. And she told me to get in a van, and she was going to take me to go get something to eat. Yeah. And I, I went with her to get something to eat, and uh, she gave me $100. And, That's sweet, man. And, and not even, but three weeks later, she found me again and did the same thing. Yeah. And she told me that God led her to me. But, like, if you think about all the rich people that live in southwest Florida, to some of these rich people, her are like, not saying her, right, but, like, in general, like, there's a lot of money in Southwest Florida. I guess. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are blaming it on the hurricane, but this was happening before the hurricane. I did videos all through here before the hurricane, and the same exact scenario was unfolding. Not sure what happened to this car right here, but you can tell um, in some way or another yeah I, I i really think that uh we need to actually help each other more yeah um i see the homeless actually harming each other like they're robbing each other and and and, and harming each other to benefit from it and it's got a lot to do with drugs and stuff yeah so like i mean i think you lose control at that point man I'm, I'm not even sure that I, I can't blame it on the drugs anymore. The things that I've seen and uh, that, are, that are going on are the people themselves. You're the person that you become. Um, drugs have a benefactor in it, but it, it's not, it's just an excuse to, right. to, to do the, the things that you're horrible, things that you want to do. So you think yeah. people do have more control than they say they do? Um, they definitely do. Yeah. They definitely do. Uh, I've, I've seen some horrible things as yeah. a homeless person. You know, you know people, I, I think most people don't realize how dangerous it is to be on the streets. Um, can you explain how prevalent it is for you to be victimized out here? I mean. Um, I, be I believe the homeless have actually became minorities now. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, I've literally been trespassed from most of these stores. Right. And, uh, it, actual plaza, the whole plazas, they've, they've literally, they, if you're homeless, they're, they're looking to trespass you. Right. And what happens and, when they trespass you? Go to jail? Um, they, well, they kick you off the property first couple times, and then yeah, if you keep going, going back. back, you'll go to jail. Um, um, is that a solution at all? Like that's definitely not a solution. For one, you you taking away from me. Like I could be going to the store to buy something to eat, or you know. Yeah. Um, there there was no reason for me to be trespassed from any of the plazas that I've been trespassed from, just because I'm homeless. Gotcha. Uh. You look, you look really young still. Uh, I'm, I'm only 32. Right, that's how old I am. Um, so I, I'm 33, and I got kicked out of North Naples High School. Uh, they were gonna in Corlear County. They call it New Beginnings. Oh yeah. New Beginnings is what they call it up there. Uh, and I refused to go, so I then they sent me to Lorenzo Walker. Um, but basically, like I feel like they set me up to get expelled because my I was below grade point average. And it was like an A school in Naples, so they didn't want me there. And so I've been working since I was like 14 years old. 
you know they kicked me out of school i didn't want to get like i wanted to learn like even now i'm trying to get my ged still oh yeah because i feel like you, without it you're nobody you know so you're about my age like we're still young um like do you look at a future do you see a future um, also like are you able have you thought about you know like it's so expensive to live now just by being homeless yeah i know it they, makes life more they, simple almost they made everything a lot more expensive yeah i, I said it would cost a dollar 35 yeah dollar 80. I, I appreciate your time bro um the only thing i can say to you is you're still young and housing like let's say like me I, I i can work right i go work right now and 80 percent of what i make just will go to rent yeah. like if you would just make a bank account and just stash that like you're saving 1800 a month by not having yeah. a rent you know like even for people who right now the way the things are going even people that like have a job and have a house we're like a paycheck away from being on the streets too what message would you have for somebody who has a house, has a job, and looks down on somebody who's just really isn't even that far away from them? Because people drive by and they might have a bad thought about you being on the streets. Like, what would you say to somebody who would say to you that you're less human than them just because you're out here? I think we're all pretty much the same. Yeah, we are. But uh, I, I've seen like a lot of people who have money and cars and houses and stuff. Yeah. Uh, actually, have dark secrets. Right. You know? um, like you hear about one of the biggest things we hear in Cape Coral, Naples, up here, are like suicide, like double, suicide. like somebody will live in a mansion and they'll and they'll like take their whole family out yeah. you know what i mean like and there's people out here going through real hardship and they just keep pushing you know i feel like the situation here is worse in california because like the overdose rate in florida is twice higher than california you can't make these numbers up. These are real numbers from the CDC. Yeah, it's true that there's more homeless people in California, but they're in way better shape than they are here in Florida. I mean, just the OD rate in Florida alone is hard to wrap your head around. Almost twice as high as California. This is an infamous gas station here in North Fort Myers. But you hear a lot of people talking about you hear a lot of people talking about I don't want to get caught recording here but you hear people talking about how California is worse than Florida in what way? this gas station here in North Fort Myers is in a bad little area alright guys so I wasn't able to get into the biggest homeless camps in North Fort Myers today there's a few bigger camps north of Pomona and north of uh, there's much larger homeless camps here just to the north of us on the left but I wasn't able to get into them today We'll have to come back again in the future and do another run. But, uh, you know, it, it didn't seem uh, like we're going to get in there today. I think it's time for us to leave already. We've already been seen by a lot of people recording. So I feel like today's a good time to just wrap it up. I really wanted to do, I wanted to get into the larger homeless camps out here in the woods. Um, really, like, we just barely scratched the surface. Uh, there's entire little camp cities here in the woods in North Fort Myers. I feel like we could almost come back again in the future and show you guys like the bigger camps. But um, I talked to a lot of people off camera and right now um, not everybody you talk to is going like, to put them on camera. But I talked to a lot of people off camera as well. And uh, we had that one people that were kind of aggressive to us. So I think the best thing we could do is wrap it up for today. Um just something tells me to go home already but um anyways it's real out here and i was really touched by that kid's story about getting kicked out of school because like 
that's what happened to me. Like, I got kicked out of school, um, and I felt like I, I almost can kind of, like, when he said he was the only white kid that got sent to that, I was like, wow, like, everything that I've been trying to tell you guys about the school system down here, basically, like, I've been trying to tell you guys about the school system, like, he's just confirmed a lot of that for us. But it's funny how every time I do these Florida homeless videos, people start saying, it's worse than California. I was just in California. I saw the camps in Los Angeles, Skid Row, and San Diego, and San Jose, and all of that. I was just in California. I just got back from California. They have more homeless people by number, but the condition of homelessness in Florida is abhorrent. Kind of a hole in the wall Latin place, but I'm not gonna be doing any more hole in the wall places for a while. See what they're ready though. Cute. So when you look at the population of homeless people in Florida and you compare it to the population of homeless people in California, you'll realize something. In California, they have a larger number of homeless people, but they're also very well equipped to be homeless. The weather is more agreeable. There are more programs to help them. Dude, there's nothing out here in Florida to help you, nothing. State offers nothing. I'm gonna try this hole in the wall new Latin restaurant here. Seems like they're offering Cuban and, and it looks like a Latin mix. We'll just try it and see what it's like. No, but the condition of homeless people in Florida is horrendous. I mean, it's practically shameful. That's how Cuban food got a look right there. There's actually an eagle cam on this field. You can watch it live on the internet. That eagle that we saw earlier, it has a like a post right there, and then you can you can actually watch it live. 